Societies are always societies that drive the world forward. And you are the leading gear in mobile societies. You are extremely frequent travelers. You know the odds and ends, the good stuff and the bad stuff. Your experience is very important for us that we learn from you. But uh, I think we share this passion of going around and that's why I'm very proud to lead a company that's dedication is to make sure that more and more people uh, are able to fly around and see the world. And uh, we know that specifically for those where it's not something that you inspire to do next year one trip, but you're on the road all the time, it's very, very important that we not only have the right product for you, but also think already today what the demand of tomorrow and the day after is. And that's what we try to instill in our company. Quality, safety, ecology are base issues. Of course, making money to invest in the future is a must, which is not so easy. Some people call the airline industry a non-profit organization. <laughs> but uh, that we can do it, uh, we have proven in the past, even so now it's very tough, but we will win this uh, game, I think, again. Yeah. But going... Thank you. Going forward, it's always good to look a little bit in the backyard and say it's not long ago that uh, aviation was really, uh, you know, getting breathing space. And we, we, we applauded always to, all, uh, to the White Brothers for their first flight. And if you remember, it was a flight of 36 meters. So the crowd is longer than the flight. The flight duration was uh, not very long and the height the ceiling height to a cruising height was one and a half meters. So where have we come in more than in roughly 100 years? It's unbelievable that every second uh, an airplane takes off on this, on, this, on this globe. And we are just at the beginning. We're just at the beginning because the societies that created mobility, which were mainly the Europeans and the Americans, uh, have only a small portion of the world population, but a vast majority of air travel and I think that's why we must make sure that we have the answers of the future in our mind and drive it forward. Now, there is a little story I would like to play in there because uh, we are close and right brothers for the first motor flight, but I should not hide the secret that actually the first flight took place about 100 miles east from here, two years before the Wright brothers. And it was not another flight that took only 36 meters, but more than 500 meters. And it was in a, an elevation of four, four meters. But why is it not registered as a first flight? Because a flight is the definition, uh, the space between a takeoff and a landing. This guy took off, flew, but never landed. He crashed in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Gustav Weisskopf, who emigrated to the United States afterwards and changed his name to Gustav, Gustav Whitehead, was a flight pioneer, but he never got the credit for the first flight. He survived his airplane not. Uh, 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 that's the aim of the game also in the future. Our company is actually, and that's why m most of you are from, from America, we're talking about foreign direct investment. Our company was born in 1926 as a merger of three small airlines. So very soon after the first flights, already airlines were there. And they, they, they decided to go to China in the very first year that they were born. So they thought it's not enough to fly in Europe and in Germany, we have to go to, to China. And in 1926, two Yonkers airplanes took off to China. They never came back because they, they launched an airline in China called Arasia, which we operated until the war started. And we had a, a, a formidable network already in China. We did the same in Russia, etc., uh, etc. Et so pioneering and being bureaucrats at the same time is a good combination of, of my company. Uh, I would like to force more the pioneering than the bureaucracy that grows by itself. And what are we doing? We are pioneering a little bit the alliance systems and you were interested, and I think you call it the star do. In the alliance uh, of star alliance, uh, uh, nobody expected that it could go in 10 years where it is now. And we are very grateful that we got a very strong partner in the US now with Continental to join STAR. <laughs> we have forgiven them the fact that they mis made a mistake, but they have not compensation, so they changed to the right, to the right alliance, and we're very proud uh, that they are now partners of ours. Uh, we are pioneering in the sense that we want to um, not only create a stronghold in Europe, where we leave the brands with the various companies, but give the customer mobility choice 
uh, of airports to change uh, if they go uh, intercont or trans Europe, etc., etc. Um, and if you allow me, just one day in Lufthansa, you looked around and saw a little bit what does it mean? One million meals are produced by our ASG kitchen around the world. About 165,000 passengers decide every day to fly with us or not. They fly, they fly with us. It's about 5,000 tons that we transport in, in cargo, in their very specific cargo. And if animals go on board, uh, they also know, they always know they go to another zoo for a mating process, so they like to fly Lufthansa. <laughs> and this way we make sure that the species don't die away. We fly about, uh, I don't know how many hundred species a year. Uh, in, in the IT services, it's 70 million uh, transactions that we do on a daily basis. And very important also, the MRO business is not only a technical service organization, but a development agency. We have developed a lot of things. The non-electric floor pass markings that you see in the airplanes, the Lufthansa Technik invention, we sell it to Airbus, to Boeing and to others. So innovation is driving it and we have a diagnostic center here where we hook up not only our own fleet and the of our partners, but many, many, many other airlines who devote the skills of looking after their metal into our hands. So our ability to learn beyond what Lufthansa is doing is there and that's why we can accelerate. Uh, we have, um, uh, which business did I forget? Some probably, but uh, anyhow, all of those are quality oriented, customer oriented, must go to the places and be innovative and at the end make money. That's uh, the name of the game. We have uh, also looked into opportunities to work with the ground operation, the airports, because we know the differentiation in the air is thin. Our 747 does fly better, but not faster than of our competitors. Maybe also safer, but the, the ground experience is a very, very important one, and that's why we have put a lot of ideas in there to go forward. We are far away from what we want to achieve, but still we believe we are on the right track, and, uh, and we want to enhance it, and every comment that you have is welcome to go forward. Now, a small serious word, we, this week or next week uh, is the 20th anniversary of uh, the breakdown of the Iron Wall, which gave us uh, 300 million people who were more or less boxed in uh, the, the opportunity to, to go outside. And without aviation, Berlin would have been a dry island because we couldn't go there on the ground, we could only fly in there. And it shows us how aviation is not only contributing to wealth, but also to peace and that is also should be on our mind. Now currently a lot of people talk about ecology. You have to fly if you believe in ecology because the carbon footprint of building an airplane and the transport mode and uh, volume it gives the consumption per passenger flying in our air it goes about 8 miles uh, a gallon per passenger uh, and the fact that we consume very little space, you know, with three miles you go around the world, with three miles on the train you're, you're stopped after three miles. So all these things together show that we are taking it serious, but also for selfish reasons, because it costs a lot of money. And I am leading the strategy committee of, of the IATA, and we have embarked on a four pillar strategy, which we have shown uh, to Ban Ki-moon and others, and it will be the driving element in the strategy how this industry can be eventually carbon free. We want to reduce our carbon footprint year by year. We want to be carbon neutral on the growth side by 2020 and by 2050 carbon free. As an engineer, I say it's not a vision, it's doable. But we must work together. We must work together with those who are the air navigation su suppliers because we don't fly like birds. Birds are very intelligent. They know that the energy that they consume is working on, on, is tiring them out, so they use the best flight every day. We have airways. I've never seen an airway up there, but we are, we are driven by airways. That has to go away. Slots have to go away. And the technology for the airplanes are there. I talked too long already, and I know we have a Q&A and I have a flight afterwards. So let me stop here. Thanking you that you have shown your interest. Thanking you for your business, for your feedback. I wish you safe landings, I wish you to exploit the world and everything that we do good tell others and the other thing we don't do good tell us. Okay? Thank you very much.